Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be working on this Ford Equinox. We're going to be changing the VVT solenoid. Let's get to it. This is a base model Chevy Equinox. It's a 2010. Do you know what size the motor is in this? Is it a 2.4? It's a four-cylinder anyway. I think it's a 2.4 liter, something like that. They only had one four-cylinder, so we'll know when we look it up. For about a week, it would idle really rough, oftentimes die, especially if you were put it in reverse and were just backing up. But it wasn't giving an engine code. The behavior was indicative of a bad VVT solenoid. After about a week, the check engine light did come on, so let's verify that that is actually the problem. To the inside. Connect that to the OBD. Start the vehicle up. And of course the check engine light is no longer on, but it should have stored that code. So we've got a code P0010. According to this, it is the, what, the A bank cam uh, position actuator. Basically, it's bank one of the VVT. So bank one is the intake. So that is the problem. Let's go take a look and see if we can find one and order it. Anytime I'm looking for a part, the first place I go is Rock Auto. They're not sponsoring me or anything like that. It's just where I go because typically I find they're by far the best price. So let's go take a look here. We know we have a 2010 Chevy Equinox with the four cylinder. And let's look at the VVT solenoid. And we know we need the intake. So it looks like it's as cheap as 15 bucks. They have all the way up to, oh, well, looks like these Delcos are about 40. Now, what the difference between any of these are, some might say quality. I don't know. I suspect they're from the same damn factory. So, I will probably not get the cheapest one, but I'll probably get somewhere around here. So, let's just say, this one we need the intake. Let's add this to the cart. So, it's going to run me 20 six and twenty seven bucks now just for comparison let's go over and take a look at my local auto parts store so here I've selected advance you could go to pep boys or you know auto zone whatever they're all going to be similar you could do a similar check but we've got the 2010 equinox let's look at a VVT again And now we don't want the whole timing chain. Let's look for VVT. There we go. So the CarQuest brand is, let's see, does it say, yep, this one's for intake. So the CarQuest branded one is $54. And the Delco one was 67. Now I don't need that. And you might remember the Delco version over on Rock Auto, so the exact same thing was 39, 38, something like that. So it's significantly more, and you can also see that I have to call the store to order. So in either case I have to order this, it's not like I can just go pick it up. So generally speaking, if I don't need the part immediately, I will go ahead and order it through Rock Auto. And in fact, I've had cases where a part with next day shipping was still less than buying it locally. Again, not sponsored, not paid for that, just that's where I usually go. So if you're on a budget and you need parts for your car, Rock Auto is definitely the first place to go. As long as you can wait a few days for it to be shipped to you, you're going to save yourself quite a bit of cash. 
just for a quick comparison I also looked at AutoZone here you can see 52 um, for the intake for the Duralast this one actually has it available so I could go pick that up today 50 uh, let's see intake 52 for the Dorman and that is cheap as 42 for this GP Sorensen so we could get it as cheap as 42 dollars locally but if you recall the cheapest one on Rock Auto was about um, I think 15 yeah 15 dollars and seven cents so there you go just some quick comparisons I'll go ahead and order the one from Rock Auto and we can get this thing installed received the new VVT solenoid here so we're gonna put that in in order to do so we've got to take off this air box here so we'll disconnect up there there's a small hose over here we need to disconnect and right down in here we have to pull that off as well The VVT solenoid is right under about there, so we have to take this dust cover off. It's pretty easy, it just snaps down, but you have to take the oil fill cap off first. So basically take it off, then grab underneath each side, and you can just pull it up. And there they are right there. We take a look at this solenoid that I bought the replacement. You'll see that this connector is gray. On those two, one is gray, one is black. So they're color coded, easy to tell which one to replace. So the one that we're after is the one that's closest to us here. The farther one is black, the closer one is gray. So we just have to take it out, put this one in. The connectors on these have locks on them. You gotta be careful so you don't break them. As long as you know what you're doing, it's pretty easy. The lock is actually right here. So what we need to do is insert something in this hole and that'll release it. I'm just gonna use this piece of TIG rod here and push it into that hole and it'll release that lock. Once we've unlocked it, we'll use a screwdriver to pry the little lock tabs up and it'll come right off. Once this lock tab, which is this white piece, is up, we have to squeeze, so we push in right here with our thumb, right here on this black part, while we lift up, and that'll pull this connector off that uh, sensor right here. The sensor is held down in there with this bolt. It's just a 10 millimeter. Basically, you take that out, and it'll pull straight out. It's a little sticky, so we'll grab some pliers and pull it out of there. There we go. That one's out. Now we'll just drop the new one in, bolt it down, put it back together. All right, now that we have everything back together, we just need to start it up, make sure the check engine light is good, and we're ready to get it back on the road. All right, we started up. You can see that the idle is, eh, it looks like it's probably about 900, which is about where we want it. 
before replacing the solenoid, the idle was lower. It was definitely rougher, and oftentimes, especially when it was cold, it would die. You can see the check engine light is still on. I think we're going to have to reset that with the code reader. So next, we'll reset that and make sure that it stays off. All right, so we go in here and we check the codes. Uh, interesting. It says it's a permanent code. The only way this one gets reset is if the vehicle itself decides that it's cleared. So it looks like what we're going to have to do is just drive this thing around, put a few miles on it until the ECU decides that it actually is no longer a problem. It took about a week for it to decide that's what the problem was. Hopefully it doesn't take a full week to clear it. Okay, I just took it for a drive around the block. Let's take a look. And there you go. Check engine light is clear. Looks like we've solved the problem. That's all there is to it. Thanks for watching.